What's up? I'm Lance. And I'm Danny. And we are from Ashes and New. And this, this is fucking badass. badass. So I'm a badass productions, that's why the whole stupid badass shit. Cool. That's what it is. So do have just a few questions that's gonna be too crazy. Unlike the song. <laughs> so let's get into that. You were talking about the song released on February 1st. You guys were traveling mm -hmm. right between where when it came out? We were traveling from Reno to Portland. Portland. So we might have traveled the night before, so we might have been just sleeping when it came out, but uh, did they wake up? No. No, no we were just like, oh, it's out today. We were just looking online to see what you know people were saying about it and stuff like and that. And what did you see that they were saying? Any good stuff? Oh, uh, a lot of good stuff. Some some not so good stuff because people are <laughs> expecting a certain thing. But yeah. the whole point of the first single was to kind of branch out a little bit into you know some different areas and. And, you know, reach a little bit more into the like commercial market, but without you know abandoning the sound because like yeah. the rest of the record still sounds very much like from Ashes to New. So, so there was a lot of good. There was some some not so good, but those people will find that there's something on the record for them. And, that, and that's usually what you find with trolls. On you gotta music. have haters. There's, if, yeah. if there's that's how you know you did something yeah, right. Yeah, haters. Exactly. You gotta be doing something that's right. That's a great answer, Danny. I think you deserve <laughs> oh, a starburst. Um, since it was a pretty good answer, I'm gonna give you an orange one. Thank you. Now you start sucking, you get the yellow ones. Okay. But I know you hate the red ones. I so love the yellow ones, so. I haven't answered yet, but I really want to. Oh, I'm, well, you're next. Yes, yeah, so I need to start. Tell me about the song. What, what What is the premise behind Crazy? What is it all about? Uh, Danny and his boyfriend broke up. <laughs> <laughs> and he's been this going crazy. Again? Yeah. Wow. Ah, crazy without my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, it's any relationship whatsoever, like. We've probably all been through it. Too. Everyone's been through it. I would hope everyone's been you through it. It builds character, right? It does. Mm -hmm. Then again, it still haunts some people to this day. That's kind of what it's about. Mm -hmm. Especially when you see our cool music video we just shot. I did. Oh, yeah. Didn't see it? It's not even out yet. <laughs> I was just saying, that's Yeah, our music song. video comes out in a couple of weeks. Because the lyric video has all of the stuff across yeah. your eyes. And yeah, yeah, yeah. We have this really cool uh, um, image of like, this girl that haunts Danny in this asylum. That's not nice. It's a pretty spooky video. But when is the video coming out? When do you expect that? Probably be two or three, two, weeks three weeks, something like that. Awesome. Yeah, probably out there. Tell me about the album. Is it, is it out? Not until I, April 20th. Okay, because I, I was looking I couldn't find anything. No, we so had April 20th for the album, and then before that we're dropping two little mini collections of songs, including B-sides that they wouldn't get on the album. So, yeah, so basically there will be eight songs total released about yeah. before the album drops, but a few of them yeah. won't be on the actual album. They'll be extras for like the del the deluxe edition. So we're just giving an onslaught of music yeah. the, <laughs> until the album Bam! Out. Songs! Bam! Songs! You get a song! You yep. get a song! I deserve a pink one for you. Eat a Starburst. Wait, is that pink? I can't tell. Can't we just like, like strap it to our mouths so we can just be packing all the time? Like a horse with a, a stock. Yeah. I think we ran out of pink. Uh oh. I'm gonna have to fight someone. So you guys picked 420 as a release date. The label actually did, I think. The label did. It has nothing to do with us. Nothing to do with you, because there's yeah, like right. a ton of music coming out that day. Uh, really? That same day? Oh yeah. I did not know who that. Who else comes out that day? I don't know exactly who, but I know everybody's like picking 420. As, uh, I wonder if everyone started to pick that on purpose. They, they do. Cool. They do right. now. It's like everybody's, let's do a show on 420. <laughs> no, our label just picked that. We were like, okay. Sounds good. <laughs> so it worked for you guys, it just kind of went with it. Yeah. So... Obviously, you have a plan for that coming out on April 20th. Matt was the driving force behind bringing From Ashes to New out. And then he brought you guys in after the other guys left. How did he find you guys to bring in? Uh, he found me on YouTube. Thanks, YouTube. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I had done... I was always doing like cover videos and stuff like that because I always enjoyed doing that. Um, and I would just put it up on YouTube just for the fun of it. So I was in a band before and doing covers was kind of like just a fun thing to do on the side and there was this one competition that had nothing to do with the band and I the reason I even did it was because my best friend Rob who's tour managing us right now okay uh, said hey you should check out this song and then you should do a, a submission for it and so I checked it out and I was like oh this is a this is actually a really cool song I wasn't even really in, that interested in winning uh, but it you know, gave you the opportunity to write your own lyrics and write your own melody and put it on top of the song that they had provided and they had 
the band was going to pick a vocalist at the end of all of it. And I just really liked the song, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to do this. So I wrote it, put it out there, and didn't think much else of it. And I guess when Chris left the band, Matt and Matt and Lance were scouring the internet looking for people who could potentially replace Chris. And eventually stumbled on all those auditions for this one competition and they were going through and they found me through there and they asked me to do uh, to submit you know an audition so I sent a few things and they said alright this sounds great we're gonna do a public audition so we want you to put yours out publicly as well like we have some other people we're looking at as well but you know keep in touch and all that stuff and they eventually just landed on me. Did you guys look hopefully live in the same area or did you have to go like No state I've driven to state? from I live in Rochester, New York, which okay. is just below Lake Ontario in between Buffalo and Syracuse. Um, so I drive five hours every time we have to Damn. do stuff. It's not that bad. It's a really nice drive, like well, scen nice scen drive scenery wise. Uh, but I've made the drive like eight to ten times now, so my car is about to like give out on me. <laughs> Hopefully this will work out and you're making some money on the album. And yeah, yeah, that would be cool. Get you a new car. Let's, uh, let's, let's try to get some more funds out there. Maybe we can get some funds from Starbucks. Yeah, that would be that's great. Cool. Thank you. And that's how they found me. Uh, they how found they find you? Oh, uh, I'm old news. I've yeah. been here for a long time. I'm like, everyone's like, whose band's not original anymore? I'm like 95% original. Fuck off. <laughs> 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 um, I used to play in a band called Emphatic back in the day. Okay. Gotcha. And then uh, the drummer brought me in, the ex-drummer brought me in a while ago. Just because it was a way cooler opportunity. Yeah, and we found new Matt, the drummer. Uh, because he, what, did he tech first or did he fill he in first? He teched first for Trivium and then he wound up playing for them on the side yeah. on the snow record. Yeah, and then he came to From Ashes to New in like 2016 or something to, to fill in. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, and then eventually Tim quit, so he took the spot. Jumped, jumped in. Yeah. When he was available. So I was reading once you guys got signed or when Matt signed with the, the record label that he was, you guys were with. Um, mm -hmm. With so many unsigned bands out there, and not just that, but unknown bands in rock and metal, social media is kind of overtaking everything, but it's also kind of overtaking it too much. Mm -hmm. Like there's too much stuff out there. How did you guys figure out to kind of step out of the realm of all the monotony of music? I think for the band it was the radio, right? Radio is still king, mm -hmm. as funny as it is. Um, it's from what I've heard, uh, my fight, got picked up on Octane because uh, one of the guys there just really liked it and started spinning it. So, because so many people listen to it, that's how they immediately got fans. Like, if you're on Octane, then you must be legit, you know? So yeah. the band just started getting a bunch of fans that way and started getting hype that way. Like, for all the newer bands that want to rely on social media, yes, you can. Yeah. Like, the only way you're going to get tours and all that good stuff, like, you have to have a label and you got to have a radio team. You have to have a you reputable to. label, too. You have to. There's no way around it. As much as you don't want to, you need it. Yeah. Because yeah. I just started working as a PR publicist for mm -hmm. actually Tag Publicity. To go figure, because the same company you guys are with yeah. doing this. It's it's interesting how, like you just said, a lot of the local bands or unsigned bands kind of think they can still all do it themselves. I know it sounds great, but you got yeah, kind of have to an extent. You, yeah. you can to an extent, but then you have to have other people that actually know the business kind of help yeah. out with what they know. Mm -hmm. to kind of move you guys forward. And the other thing is that on social media, it, it is a blessing and a curse because yes. you get to put your music out to literally anyone in the world. For free, but so for does free. every other person who's ever picked up an yeah. instrument ever, regardless of how serious they are. Oh, about sure. it. So you get lost in the wake of all these other people who have the same amount of access as you do. You could be playing for 20 years, be the best musician in the world, never be heard if you're only relying on social media Correct. because all these other people can use it as well. So it's great because you can reach out, but you can also get lost in all the other noise that are, you know, the other musicians trying to do the same thing. One of the best uh, answers I had on a question like that was uh, band. one of the bands was like, we don't even give out our music to even friends or family. So we put out a snippet, but if you want it, you still have to buy it. Yeah. So it's like, you know, so you two or, or whatever you're on, uh, Spotify, all that mm -hmm. stuff. It's like, just buy it. I oh, hell, we, we buy our own records. Yeah, we go sure. into FYE and all that when the record comes out. We'll buy it. Then you only get like not even a dollar out of what you pay for. I know, but we <laughs> usually go in and we'll buy a few and we'll give them to the people yeah. working there just to yeah. kind, of, kind of show off a little bit. 
I'm not show off, but do something know. nice. You know, yeah. like. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I, I wish I could do something like that. Would be awesome. But anyway, you're bo you're no. Your message as a band is very positive. I've kind of read into that. Um, inspiring people to take risks and not settle, not be mediocre in life. Yeah. How did that come about? Because it seems like a lot of people, especially with full-time jobs, especially when they get into their 30s, early 40s, kind of get into that just repetition of a daily grind. What made you guys kind of just, you know, say this is what I'm going to do, whatever it takes, I'm going to do it? I mean, well, what are you going to do? You're going to die? Someday, and not take any experiences with it. You need to experience life. Yeah. There's no point in settling. Yeah, I mean, and I think we learn something new about it every day. You know, there's always more to learn about, like that methodology where you just need to go out and do what you want to do and chase the things that you want to chase. Like, that's at its core what life is about. And, and I think that resonates with all of us in the band and why it, it comes out in the music so much. and you know the things that we post online is that like Jim Carrey said it best about his dad you know he his his dad you know lived a safe life and he got fired from his safe job so if you can fail at something you don't want you might as well go out and do what you love hey, so didn't and then live in a car after all that happened and yeah and you know he brought into existence the dream that he wanted to have so he just worked hard at it every day and the most important thing he did was envisioning it already being real. Like he wrote a check for $10 million and he got paid almost just that amount for, the for that movie. time period. Yeah, the time period he gave himself. Like, and almost on like the, the flip side of it though, you got all the people telling us that you're stupid and this is a waste of time. Are those so, people that sit there and are mediocre or just Yeah, they average? give you the fuel to feed into this whole yeah. machine. The thing is, is like those people should take that energy and focus on themselves and just build on themselves rather than trying to look at someone else and tear them down from doing exactly. something. See, it's what benefits you because if somebody's telling you to do something that they only wish they could do to kind of tear you down, that's what kills you. It's like, then you start listening to them and not saying you would. Right. A lot of people do. A lot of people do. And then they're like, well, yeah, and then they think they're going to fail. Yeah. And that's where it all kind of ends is all that talk. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, we could go into a conversation yeah. for hours about this. And I, I would love to as well, but like, you, there's just so much to it. There's there's so many different like philosophies and, and stuff like that 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 are about you know leading a positive life and chasing your dreams and envisioning it and all that stuff. And it's an important thing to do. I, I honestly think it's the secret to life is to is to figure out what you would do if money were not an object. Like, what is it that you would do right now? That's exactly what you should go do. So, how old are you guys? Just to kind of. 17. 17. <laughs> I'm, I'm 26. 26. Uh, 31. Okay, I'm 43 and I actually changed my life kind of around about 38 years old. Exactly what you just said. Kind of just, what can I envision myself doing, whether it was money or not? Yeah. So I was already a photographer. I ended up still doing it. But then I ended up starting an art show, an art music show. Mm -hmm. And I started doing podcasts. And I started doing a media company. Now it's all together. That's so cool. it's like, it's everything I've ever wanted to do, plus I do a lot of sports stuff too. So That's awesome. We were kind of talking about that. So you're happy with your life? I am absolutely, well, not all matter. 100% happy, but... So what first, would make you even happier right now? Money. All right, well, that will come as long as you... Uh, else, yeah, well, that's the thing. You just work hard and you're yeah. going to get it. Yep. But building what I have built because of my taking the risks rather than sitting there on a phone answering phone calls all day, mm -hmm. I had to get out of that. It was like yeah. one of those things where... I'm not, if I don't do it now, what am I going to do? Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with doing that either because sometimes you need a means to an end. You know, Correct. you can sit there and answer phones all day. Just just have something that you want to chase, something that you want to do with your life, something that you're passionate about, and make that your means to your end and just go in and just crush it every day as much as you can. I worked in the same restaurant for like 10 years. I was going to say, what, do you guys, what did you guys do before you got into being an established band? Yeah, I worked in and still, I still do. Like when I go back home, just to like fill my time, have a little extra money, it keeps me busy. You know, I can't retire right now, so why not, go make, <laughs> why not make any more money? So I, I go and work in the same restaurant. It's very family oriented. They let me, you know, leave and I can pick up hours when I go back home. It's a, it's a nice place to work. All the people are really cool. So I still work there, you know, and I, I stayed there for 10 years. I, it's the only job pretty much I've ever worked. I was 16 when I started and now I'm 26 and I'll still go back there. You know, just because I enjoy it and I enjoy the people there. See, that's the thing. Is like you now you're doing what you love, but you also can fall back on that just to kind of get out of that 
crazy. Yeah, I get to go back home, music and all relax, yeah. get in some shifts, cook some food, which is really nice and therapeutic as well. So it's it's cool. I enjoy it a lot. What about you? What you um, I just sell cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You too. Huh? Yeah. No. Ooh. Uh, no. Um, pretty lame. I worked at Hot Topic for a little while. We live in Amishville, so I worked at some Amish flea market, gotcha. helping out all the old people. Being so a, where, where do you, where are you from? Where do you live? I live in Ohio, like an hour below Cleveland. Okay, and you were talking about uh, sports. Obviously, wearing a Bulls shirt, jersey, Jordan. Hell yes. You were born in the early 90s. Yeah. Sad for me. <laughs> but uh, what sports kind of athletes kind of drove you to kind of be who you are because you like said you like playing basketball a lot. yeah uh i it was actually a big part i mean i have an athletic mindset when it comes to to music you know i treat everything that i did at least personally like it was a competition or a sport i was like i want to be the absolute best i can possibly be so i spent hours and hours every day you know throughout middle and high school playing drums, playing bass, playing guitar, and then working on singing and stuff like that. And, and I'm still not even close to, you know, one of the best singers in the world, so I'm going to continue to work sure. because that's what athletes do, it's you know? practice, practice, practice. They practice for hours on end, even at the top, you know? And mm -hmm. so that played a big part in my life was watching Michael Jordan be so great and, and all these other athletes be so great. And so for me, it was just like, that's how I wanted to treat music. And... For nine years, I was like, "Wow, this isn't working." <laughs> but it was—they were just baby steps to to get to this point. And still, even now, like, still working on climbing, you know, and reaching, reaching further for, towards the top because we're, you know, we're not near the top yet, and we want to keep growing as a band. So, so yeah, it still plays a role in my life for sure. I think sports are are amazing. It's a great mentality to have. And you were, we were talking before the interview, uh, some of your favorite. Basketball players, just athletes alone. Who were some of them? Ah, oh, man, all, all like the the basketball like all stars. I, I don't have any like uh, loyalty to a single team. I just like mm -hmm. watching certain players. So like, I love watching Tom Brady. I love watching you know Matt Ryan like in in the NFL and and players like that. And in basketball, I like watching Steph Curry and Kyrie Irving and LeBron James and Kevin Durant. And, all those dudes just because they're so Talented. good at what they do and it's it's unreal and like e even watching them practice like those dudes can drill like 33s in a row like it's nothing and those are NBA range threes like that's hard to do man like you, you've literally de dedicated like every moment of your thought and being to that sport like that's crazy to me and I think that's awesome and are you a fan of sports as I'm well? I'm pretty sure I just took a nap <laughs> you know, we're talking, I was zoned out. Are you we're talking about sports, fan? Are you right? sports fan as well? Uh, no. No, no. I used to be when I played in high school. But you played football. Yeah, I, I was I too like much of a wuss. Sports, but like, I, don't know. I was a wuss in, in middle and high school, so I tried it once and totally bitched out. Why you say that? Because were you? I didn't even play football until after high school. Wow. <laughs> in high school, were you pretty jacked? Still no. Or no. No. Yeah. I was puny. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little twerp. <laughs> Let me get back to some of the questions here. Do you guys have any pre-show rituals that you guys We do? all pee on each other. Gotta poop. Well, I know I heard the poop earlier. Yeah. I'm up the bathroom there. Gotta go. It's like everything in you moves right before a show. All right. Well, so do you have any fun foods? <laughs> <laughs> do you have any interesting food while you're out here? Or just house food? When we were in California. What did we have? We had the California burritos. Oh, the biggest burritos I've ever had in my life. Burritos. They were amazing. Well, California burritos are just burritos filled with fries along with the steak and all that stuff. But like just the size of these particular ones. Yeah, and carne asada and pico, the guy. Literally else. the size of football. Oh, yeah. They were literally like this big, like a Nerf football. It's probably like double what you get at Chipotle. Yeah. <laughs> and it was amazing. It was like the best thing I ever had. So like sex in your mouth after uh, eating yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, sex can be in your mouth, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That yeah, was kind of gross. Uh, favorite like TV shows, movies that you guys watch mm. outside of uh... We're the two in the band that share the same TV show. Yeah, what is it? Lost. Oh Lost. yeah. It's the greatest TV show to ever exist. Yep. Hands down. Anyone who disagrees can fight me. Let's go. Let's go. I've got a few of them out there that I can uh, throw at you. Yeah. Wow, what's yours? Sons of Anarchy. One of the best. That's cool. My, my mom, my Breaking brother. Bad, Breaking uh, Bad. Game of Thrones. Sopranos. Those. But yeah, Lost wasn't wasn't bad. Yeah, I got redundant toward the end, but yeah, you gotta. But there was never an ending. I I always tell people, <laughs> you gotta watch it all the way through. That's true. Two times. Okay. 
and then you'll basically what I tell people is like you get to the end like when I was on TV it was a week apart and because that's so much time over six seasons you forget a lot of things mm -hmm. so like it feels sometimes like it's just not moving when you watch all six seasons you know over the course of like a couple months From Netflix or whatever. yeah and then you start it over you're like holy shit this is connected to this this is connected to that this part in season one happened in season six or was foreshadowing that like there's just an, an insane amount of like crisscrossing yeah it's not there are things, messages early on that yeah there are early. things like in the first season that don't get answered until the last season and like the last few episodes or, like if you were to go and watch it and then watch it through a second time you'd be like oh this all makes sense so that's why i like it it's it's an awesome like fiction show that you know brings in like quantum physics and like <laughs> religion and like crazy science and then just the drama from people dealing with with their lives and being lost on this island, being lost in their own lives, like I just thought it was amazing. There's so many life lessons in that show. And a similar show that we got into, um, Westworld. Yeah, that's a great show We're too. Waiting on the second season to come out. I highly recommend it. Who's in that? Anyone or is Anyone? Anthony, Anthony Hopkins is the main. Yeah, player. that's okay. that's the guy who was who's like a notable dude for sure. Everybody else is kind of like the up and comers. Um, like oh, who was the the man in black? Um, Ed Harris. Yeah, oh, Ed okay. Harris. Okay. Even the guy playing, uh... The guy who plays Teddy. Yeah, he's, he's known. Uh, James Marston? Yes. Who, who has yeah, he, he played was before? It. He was he in, done? Uh, Cyclops? Yeah, yeah, Cyclops. Man, you were on point with this shit. James Marston, he was also in, uh, 30 Rock. I did not like him as Cyclops. He seemed like such a, like, a whiny bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what? So, any, any plugs or any... Obviously, this is your last show. There's a couple tour. plugs, I think. One over here. <laughs> There's over there. Yeah, there's some plugs over there. Uh, <laughs> we're like obviously social media. We can find you guys all over there on YouTube. Oh yeah. But, uh, album comes out again. April 20th. But there will be songs before that. Anything we can, any dates we can think of? Uh, well, they haven't even told us. We are. I, we're actually making this yeah. whole shit up. <laughs> <laughs> Everything we've talked about is a lie. It's all bullshit. Don't even listen. All uh, right. I don't know. Like a couple weeks. Sometime, I know, I heard the word March. Beginning of March, yeah, something like that. I heard the word March, I don't know. And then like a few weeks after that, something like that. Awesome. Gentlemen, thank you guys so much for sitting with me. Oh, I get the cherry one, too. Thank you. 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 Thank you.